All right, welcome back everybody to another episode of Banished. Where we left off last time, we had the basic structure of our new civilization put in place. We have uh, three houses, good food supply, tools, and clothing, and everything like that that we need. So right now we do have a sustainable um, environment here for our new town. What we want to do next is get a little bit more infrastructure in place so that we can start expanding. Now, the problem that a lot of people have when they're first starting out with Banished and uh, things like that is they usually expand too quickly or they don't expand quickly enough. It can be kind of complicated. So most people will expand too quickly where you build too many houses for your food supply to last out. Once you run out of food, your entire civilization could die off, not just that excess population. If you grow too slowly, once your population um, starts getting to that retirement age, you know, the 50s and 60s where those older generations start to die off, if you don't have enough children to repopulate your civilization, the same thing can happen. You won't have enough people to be able to keep up with your food supplies and things like that. So we want to expand slowly at first just so that we can keep a steady supply of children coming in, but not too quickly that we're going to run out of food. So every population takes 100 food per year. So at this rate, if we had zero people on food, uh, food production, we could have 32 people survive or you know, 20 people for but almost two years. So we're doing pretty good on that market. Um, right here, you can see that we have um, some adults coming into favor. So we have an 18 year old, an 18 year old, 18 year old, and some of the population needs to expand into their own home so they can start to reproduce and things like that. So uh, we will have to build a couple more houses here and we'll go ahead and start that off. Um, so we have an option on where we want to put our homes. I do have these hunting cabins out here. I do want to build some homes closer to them so that um, anybody working at those hunting cabins don't have to walk quite as far to get where they need to go. And we do have this bridge up here connecting to this land. So what I think I will do is start out a little bit of dirt and start to build a couple of log cabins right along this road here. Um, so right here is the end of the bridge. I want to give them one space so that I can build a road out here and they can kind of sneak past the log cabins and get to where they need to go. And then uh, we should have some room here. So just by building these three log cabins we should have enough room for uh, a little bit of expansion. So we had a couple 18 year olds, we have, looks like we have a 13 year old, 10 year old, 16 year old. So we have enough people where they'll want to eventually expand into these houses. And then uh, three extra homes will increase the population enough that it won't necessarily negatively affect us. So we got those homes going. I'll let my workers go a little bit here. I did allow the game to run for about five minutes just so that the workers could deliver materials to build up some of our uh, buildings here. So we have our small quarry and we have our shore house. Um, I have one worker here digging sand so that uh, they can supply our brickworks with the sand they need to be able to finish construction. Next thing I want to do is come over here and just build a bridge across so we can get a little bit easier access to this from our main town. All right, so what else do we have going on here? So we have our brickworks in place. We're waiting for some resources to gather there. Uh, I want to increase our maximum materials on that so we don't uh, just have these workers sitting idle if we hit that cap. The materials allowance is used for a lot of things. In this version, coal is actually a material now instead of a food. Glass is a material and, and all sorts of other things. You're probably going to have thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of so usually this you'd want to just keep capped there's there's no real reason why you would ever not want them to continue to produce materials and it looks like we have seven laborers so I'm going to go ahead and increase our small quarry a little bit here two laborers is not going to produce a lot of stone but well we might as well bring it up to five so we still have two laborers to transport materials and uh, collect resources and things like that so Eventually, once I need more people, I will take them away from our quarry here um, because there is other stone deposits we can get to if we really need them. 
And actually, I'm going to do a full stone and iron clear here. So this will remove a lot of the stone materials and give more positions for the forest to automatically regrow. And uh, why don't we actually stop that. So those laborers should all go into action and start removing these materials and uh, we don't necessarily need the stone quarry quite yet. And that pretty much should do it for now. I'm going to take a little cut here, just allow some of these buildings to build and um, things like that. It's not exactly exciting watching little workers uh, transport logs from one building to another. So I will be right back in one second. All right, so we do have our freshly built houses here. It looks like our population did spread out a little bit, but the issue we run into is we do still have some adult age people in some of these other homes. Um, this one is probably going to free up pretty soon. They're getting into about the 50 range. Once they get to about 60, then that house, unfortunately, is going to free up for some other people. Um, this one has a 51-year-old, but uh, we do still have some 20-year-olds and some other people over here that... Uh, should probably expand into another home. So what we're going to need to do is uh, build just a couple more homes here. I'm going to put them... Mm, can't really put one there. We'll uh, put those there and I'm... I'm gonna do something a little bit cheaty here. Uh, there's actually a new option in this tool. If I could find where it is. Right here. So we have a flattened terrain tool now. Uh, you don't want to use this too much, but every once in a while you'll get to a point where there's just one little thing that's preventing you from making kind of a really nice civilization. Um, so I would recommend using this kind of sparingly just to remove one or two blocks of obstruction when you're trying to build a building. All you really need to do is use the flatten terrain tool and flatten out the area that um, you want to use. So I need to go one more here. And then uh, once you do that, you can use the remove tool to remove those. So now that we flatten that terrain out a little bit, it should have removed that uh, little artifact in the corner there with, that was preventing us from building this house. So didn't change the ter terrain at all or anything like that. It was just a little bit too close to the shoreline. And it was just a road piece that it was uh, trying to build there. So I don't think that's too big of a deal. Use it uh, however you like. If you want to flatten the entire world, you definitely can. So, all right. So we have a couple of homes being built here. We have our new bridge. We have our hunting cabins, which I do want to increase the laborers for. We have three of them now. So one, two, and then this one down here. So that will be a maximum of nine workers. We do have eight additional laborers that we can play with a little bit here. And one thing that we did run out of is logs. Um, there's not a whole lot of logs kind of in this area that I want to clear out. Uh, I can clear this area here. I will put a stockpile up there so they don't have to uh, make that one a little bit bigger. So I'll just remove that and make it a little bigger. Increase priority. It looks like there's a rock or a vegetation right there preventing it from building. So, all right. So we can remove those trees, start to build that up a little bit. But I do want to put a forester in. Uh, you can build pretty much whatever kind of forest you want. There's a couple of new hardwood foresters that you don't want to use quite yet. Those are really kind of later game when you need to get uh, special lumber for um, making furniture and things like that. You probably want to stick with just the forester lodge of one of the either the standard or the new trees. So this will only plant palm trees. This will only plant new trees. This will plant pretty much everything. And a good place to put this is right in here, if I can. Looks like that's probably going to be in the way. I'll go right there. So we'll put the Forester Lodge right in here so that it increases the forest growth in this area. So it should allow the gatherers and the hunters to have a little bit better output. 
There's some debate if a new forest or an old forest or anything like that really affects the output of the forester lodges. I've done a little bit of experimenting on it. I haven't really noticed any kind of a difference. A lot of people will put up a forester lodge and set it to plant only right next to their hunting cabins. Uh, the difference is really negligible. I mean, the, just the variations between the seasons, I think, has caused more of a variation than what I could see from uh, the Forester Lodge being right next to it. So, Typically, for me, I will put up a Forester Lodge. I'll put one worker in it so that they do typically have a higher rate of planting versus cutting down. But at the same time, we don't want all these logs to go to waste and just fall over and, and die without us collecting them. So it's um, a good idea just to have one worker in there for a steady supply of logs. So now that we have our brickworks over here producing charcoal, we can't actually get rid of this. So I believe the production value of this was about, I think it's nine fuel per log and the brickworks actually does 11 fuel per log. So it's uh, quite a bit more efficient to use the brickworks to produce your charcoal than it is um, for them to produce your firewood. So once we get rid of this, we can remove that road piece and we can put Oops, we can put a dirt road in there, so then we can kind of square that off a little bit. Now, the next thing that we're going to approach here is trade buildings. So we need to improve our food production a little bit. We can't really rely on the hunting lodges and things like that forever. They take up an awful lot of space. So we're going to have to move into some farms and some animals and things like that. With the new expansion, we have the Trading Post, Farm Supplier, Charter Company, Bootlegger, Smuggler Stock, and the Native Trader. So the way these work is they can each produce their own items. So Charter Company um, has a higher tax on trade prices and things like that. The Bootlegger will pretty much give you any materials you want for the Silver Fenning, which is the from those precious mines that I was talking about last episode. Smuggler stock is pretty expensive. We don't really have any of these materials, <laughs> so I'm not even going to get into that right now. So the two things we want to look at are the trading post and the farm supplier. At the beginning of your series, you're going to probably want to use the farm supplier. It's a lot more expensive. It's 120 stone, which stone is not the easiest to get. But honestly, it is definitely, definitely, definitely worth it. So... I'm going to put both of these in just to make sure that I have room for them. Um, not exactly sure where I want to put them. Um, this takes up a little bit of kind of prime real estate, but it's not uh, not too bad. You want to put these somewhere where you can see them so that you can see if there's a trader waiting. When you have um, both the farm supplier and the trading post, you'll actually get two visits in the same amount of time you would normally have one. So you, you always want to make sure that you keep an eye on it. Um, and this is actually not, uh, this is not too bad. I kind of like how this looks. Where it has uh, the house and the crane kind of up there and then the dock area is all over the water. I think it kind of fits real nicely with the terrain. So let's, uh, let's put it there. And I'm going to pause it because we don't need it quite yet. Uh, what I do want to put in, actually, is something that I'm blocking myself from doing right now. Um, let me go ahead and move this to a little bit more permanent area. And then we're going to go right there. Move structure. Increase priority. All right. So now once we get this farm supplier in, the nice thing about this is it only brings materials that you can use for farming. So seeds and um, other items like that that uh, you would normally have to just kind of roll the dice and wait for. But uh, with the farm supplier, we'll always get seeds. We'll always get farm animals. 
and it's just a much 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 easier way of doing it um, so we'll go ahead and pop that right in there all right so that is building up really quick um, since we have this stockpile right here they just dumped all of their resources in there and we do need quite a bit of stone so I'm going to increase our stone production here this area down here looks like they did clear away all of the stone and everything like that to make way for some new trees which is really good uh, we have quite a bit of stone and iron down here they just need to transport it uh, up and we'll give them a better chance at doing that by putting in a road Oh boy, we are out of storage room. Looks like we have about 4,300 food, and food takes up just an absolutely absurd amount of space. Alright, so let's uh, put a barn there. That will collect a lot of the materials from over here. And we'll put a barn right up here. Why not? Yeah, it doesn't really fit in there. Does it fit here? No. Hmm. I do like having a, a lot of barns right next to my trading post, though. Let's see what we can do to kind of square this off here. Alright, so that is going to come there. I suppose we can put some small barns in here. One there. Oh, it's going to be a pain. And again, another thing that we can uh, use the flatten terrain tool on. Oops. And then remove those markings. And then we'll see if we can put our small bar in there now. There we go. Again, just uh, removing a little chunk of uh, coastline that would have prevented us just from putting in this building and making it look nice. Alright, so that is almost built already. So we do have a good supply of stone still. Um, I think I'm going to increase production on that. Logs, yeah, we're pretty consistently out of logs. Put third person in there so we can build up a little bit better log supply. And I'm going to do just a little bit of cleanup in this area. That ought to do it. Now, a little bit of a dilemma here. So we have our farm supplier. Eventually, just like our trading post, somebody will come floating down the river. They'll dock here with uh, some supplies. It's always going to be some sort of um, seeds or uh, farm animals or something like that. So those things are pretty expensive. That's where the ceremonial grounds come in. We do have four laborers, so I'm going to put one person here. What the ceremonial grounds does is they go out and they search for artifacts. Those artifacts come from um, the grounds themselves, you know, kind of grave robbers or whatever have you. It's the same mechanic that was in Golden Llama, if you've played that uh, expansion pack. And each one sells for 2,500 trade value, which is a really good deal. The problem with that is, again, it's a little bit cheaty. Uh, you're basically sacrificing one laborer to get free materials from your trading posts. I don't know how I feel about that. I I think we want to probably do it in the legitimate way to get uh, some of our supplies. Later on in the series, when we pretty much have unlimited supplies, I would probably use up the um, resources that the grounds gather. But... For right now, I think we will use just standard materials to purchase some of our starting goods. So, it looks like we have our barn built here. It's already 20% full. And, uh, man, we might as well get rid of our storage cart here when we can. Mm, what else do we have? 
I put a barn. Let's see, where is it? Here. So if I put a barn in here, that should fit. Question is, do I want to? I think so. All right, so let's look how our population is doing. So we have 32 adults and nine children. We have 5,000 food, so we have plenty of food production. Obviously, the food's just scattered around here. Uh, every house seems to have just about two adults. Uh, you know, again, this one's probably going to free up so that the child can, or the younger adult can take over that household. Same thing here. The younger adult's probably going to take over that household. But I think if we increase our houses here just slightly it will be okay and then I can take this and we can give them their own barns so any materials that come kind of from this area will be stored here it also gives them the opportunity to get materials from elsewhere store them in these barns and use them here so that they don't run out of food and things like that all right, so we have our first trader here, and here we go. So the same things that you would normally see on a standard trading post, except it's all seeds. There's no other materials that they're going to sell except for seeds and livestock. Um, for about the same prices. And uh, for those of you that have never played Colonial Charter before, there is a huge amount of seeds in this expansion. I think it's something on the order of like 50 different kinds of seeds. And then they're all priced a little bit differently. So the squash seeds are 25, the bird, the bird's eye chili seeds are 4,000. Depending on the utility of these items determines their cost. So things like wheat and flax are gonna be more expensive because you can actually use those materials in the production of other goods like bread and cookies. Things that don't really have any kind of production value like squash, they just flat out eat squash. You can't do anything with them. So those are gonna be a little bit cheaper for you. If you're looking for a good source of food right away, you can always go for the 2500 ones. When you get into making goods out of these crops, then you'll have to spend a little bit more. And like I said, that's where the ceremonial grounds comes in with kind of filling in those extra values. So I think we do want to go with some squash. I don't really have a need for any of these other items. The chili seeds just aren't worth 4000 right now. So we'll, uh, we'll see if we can buy one of those. Some materials in here that we don't necessarily need are arrowheads. I'm going to do one, one. We'll do feathers. We'll do...